When it comes to Alia sometimes hides her feelings in Russian, Alia is a character that honestly has been one of the funniest to watch as the transformation of her feelings have grown. And of course the story is very much in the early stages of from where the anime's perspective is and from what I've read in the light novels which is volumes 1 through 4 and part of 4.5. And I think what's funny looking back at her character is just the fact that she is very much of a girl that's Honestly, in my opinion, insane, but also in denial. And what I mean by insane is the fact that she gets kind of like almost a kick, a bit of a a bit of a kink for saying very embarrassing things in Russian, thinking that no one knows what she's saying. And the main protagonist kind of equates this as like streaking, like the idea of running out somewhere nude and it's just instead people can't see you. That's kind of what it is. It's like standing out there nude, but no one can see you. But actually, someone can see you. You just don't know it. And that's what I find kind of funny. It's that that, it, that thrill that she kind of gets from speaking in Russian, saying things in it, and just her joy at her thinking that no one understands her. Which is why I also want to see what happens when he does actually say, hey... I can speak Russian, I understand Russian, I know what you've been saying, and just seeing her face go completely red and explode. But yes, he has actually spoken Russian in the light novels, and she just thinks that he's just learned a couple of fancy words to just encourage her, so she hasn't put too much behind that other than, yeah, he he, he uses a couple of words. The thing that I think will happen over time is... The childhood friend, which is of course Alia's sister, clear as day, obvious, but I think that she will know that he knows Russian. She does ask him, or she speaks Russian, and then he kind of plays dumb, and then she kind of turns around and then kind of rubs it off. I think she knows that he knows Russian still. It's not like he's forgotten it kind of thing. That's what I mean by that in context. So I think she's just going to keep it quiet. She's just not going to say anything to her sister. She's going to let her sister make herself embarrassed. And I think she will just support Alia through her journey as they get together. I still do not believe Alia's sister will try and impede on their relationship whatsoever. I just don't see that. But I do think she will have to overcome her own feelings towards him. Because I do think she clearly has some lingering feelings towards him. And I think it's going to take a bit of time for him... Or sorry, a bit of time for her to get over it. And possibly also him as well. He might have some lingering feelings for her. Because of some of the emotions and dreams and all that kind of stuff. There's going to be some kind of thing that's going to have to happen. A bit of a resolution. But the end game is Alia and him. They are the end game. They are the final couple. They will be the ones together. That's how I see it. Alia, though, is very much in denial. And I do think she plays a little bit of yo-yo where she goes from confessing her feelings but then backpedaling and then going back to confessing and then backpedaling. And she's very much timid on that. She just keeps going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. At some point, there's going to have to be a bit of give and take. And even though at the end of Volume 4, there is some major stuff that does happen, where, yet again, confess, back, forth, back, forth. But at the end of that volume, she does make a major confession. I do think there's going to be a situation where she will confess it, but at the same time, she'll go back in denial. And that's what I mean. She is a girl that, honestly, in my opinion, is insane and in denial. She just will not admit her feelings, but deep down inside... I think she knows, and that's the thing. She's having that tug of war. Why is she holding back? That's the question. That's something that I think that will be delved into further on in the light novels, is why is she so reluctant to just go down that path, admit it, but stay admitting to it? Why she needs to keep going backwards and forwards? Also, Yuki being a great character as far as pushing Alia and confronting her and saying, yeah, I have feelings for him, what about it? And trying to push Alia further into going for what she wants as far as a romance goes. I think Yuki is probably the one character that's probably doing the best when it comes to pushing her into chasing who she's in love with. 
whether that ends up playing out for the best, or if Yuki decides to really up her troll game, we'll just have to wait and see. But I think it's one of the funniest parts about Alia as a character is when you look at her backstory and her personal drive. I've definitely seen some criticisms for people saying that it's kind of like petty, that she's acting in the way she is, she's secluding herself. And I'm like, no, you got to understand her level of drive. And I think that can be hard for some people to understand that don't have much personal drive in themselves. When you're doing a lot of things in your life, you want competent people around you. You don't want people that don't have that same motivation and that same drive to achieve things. And in school, yeah, that's definitely one of those. I remember in high school and in primary school, there are situations where you've got to do group projects and there's always one person that's highly motivated to try and get the best grade. And then there is one or a couple that just don't care. They just think, meh, whatever, I don't care, you can do the flat, you can do the rest of it all, they'll just keep procrastinating it, and it ends up agitating people, and that's why schools do group projects to try and get that form of communication, because it can be kind of annoying where one person wants to get things done, the other person doesn't, and they have to communicate, and they both have conflicting thoughts on how they want to do things, and so yeah, Alia has a bit of a difficult personality when it comes to wanting certain desirable outcomes when it comes to school projects or just in things in general. She wants someone that's motivated and driven, which is not a bad thing to ask from someone. And I think the reason why she gets criticized from anime fans is because those people just don't have any personal motivational drive. And so they look at a character that is personally motivated and they get annoyed because, well, they then see someone that's actually doing something that they're never going to do because they're just being lazy. And that's one of the great things about anime, is that there are many characters that sometimes upset people just because they're something that they want to be, but they're never going to be because they're just too goddamn lazy. But then when you look at the main male protagonist, he is someone that does have motivation and drive when the carrot on the stick is the right thing. And in his case, it's her. Alia is his motivational carrot on the stick. That's what he's chasing. And it's very clear that he has feelings. He's a little bit less in denial than her. And so I think that's what's going to push them together. But it's about getting him out of his shell. And I think as he gets out of his shell, she will be able to also get out of her shell as well and be able to make more friends with more people. And I think she won't be so demanding on people because she is very much someone that I think expects a lot from those that are close to her, which is why she's so sheltered away from other people. It's because of that icy personality of, and her expectations. The other thing, though, too, is also the complaints about her speaking Russian and it being like, oh, well, she doesn't speak very good Russian. That comes down to sub and dub. From a light novel and the manga's perspective, it's all your imagination and the rioting and all that kind of connection but from an anime's perspective you've also got to remember that she did live in Russia for a little bit she lives in Japan and so there's those moments where her Russian may be a little bit scratchy or a little bit unpolished which makes sense from an anime's perspective I think it fits perfectly someone having perfect absolute Russian would be a little bit weird especially for someone that's gone from one country to another maybe you know someone gifted sure but again just because you're gifted in some things doesn't mean you're gifted in everything there are going to be some strengths and weaknesses so i do think it makes sense from an anime's perspective her russian being a little bit unpolished but that also just comes down to some people just may not like certain voice actors and i'm not so picky as that so for me i think it does a perfectly fine job as far as the story goes i think her as a character is one of the best romance protagonists that i've seen in a while just because of the flair in the personality the different personality traits in how she connects with other people not just within herself and her own monologuing but with other people as well and her own personal drive and how it all melds together and the fact is is that it's her hiding her feelings in Russian, which adds a nice little spice. It's, it's a little bit of flavor to the overarching story because romance stories like this are generally seen as very generic and very copy-paste because it's always in a school setting, it's always got a romance, it's always got a sister, which Yuki is very you know self-aware of that genre and tries to poke fun at it. But that's the thing. Those kinds of stories do have a lot of copy-paste formulas because, yeah, it's hard to do anything else. And, and if you do go outside of that 
thing, then it just goes into office work. Because that's the thing. That's what Japan is known for. School work. School work. You're either at an office job or you're in school. And so sometimes those kind of formulas can feel a little bit copy-paste. And a lot of anime and light novel fans and manga fans are generally younger, so of course they're going to connect with these kind of school settings a lot more, and that desire and wish fulfillment of having that perfect romance, that happy ever after kind of Romeo and Juliet style story in a school setting. So yes, there's going to be some formulas that are going to be overdone a little bit, and in this case, yeah, there's some formulas that can be seen as generic, but I feel like the author has added some interesting twists and turns into the story, and I think Alia is one of those characters that does a great job at being a little bit more flavorful than most normal high school or school setting rom-com romances. So again, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What are your thoughts and opinions from a manga, light novel, or an anime's perspective? Any and all thoughts are definitely welcome. Keep it civil. If you like this video, hit the like, subscribe, and I'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video.